Some important concepts to understand before we get into it. One of the forces being applied to your motorcycle is inertia, which pushes you and the bike forward. This stabilizes your bike upright, and the faster you go, the more inertia you have. As the rider, you have direct control of this force via the use of the throttle and brakes. We also have the force of gravity, which pulls you and the bike downward at a constant rate. As a rider, we don't have any control over this force, unless you're Magneto. Another term we're going to use is center of gravity. This is the point where all the distributed mass and weight of you and the bike converge and equalize. This can change depending on the bike, the rider, and the rider's position on the bike. So you're riding your bike happily, but now you need to adjust direction. The motorcycle's front tire is what's used to adjust the direction of the motorcycle's forward momentum, and the rider controls the front tire via the handlebars, which move on a forward and back axis. When you twist the handlebars while moving forward, you introduce another force called torque. Torque is the rotational force that comes from the center of gravity wanting to stay on its previous path while the bike starts to change direction. You may have heard of this, this is called Newton's first law. Here's the best example I could find of the demonstration that torque has on the bike while turning from Cambridge University. The centrifugal force varies based on your speed and the center of gravity. This is because the faster you're going and the more aggressively you turn the handlebars, the more centrifugal force is introduced. If your speed is low, then the torque is also low, so the bike will travel in the path the tires are taking it. When this happens, we often need to counterbalance using our bodies to keep the center of gravity as close to 90 degrees as we can. Otherwise, the bike might lean over and fall. Once we increase our speed, torque increases, and counterbalancing with our bodies alone is no longer enough to equalize all these forces. This is why we lean the motorcycle. We need to change the location of the center of gravity in order to negate the centrifugal force pushing the motorcycle out of the turn. Let's step through this process. In this example, we want to take a left turn. To force the motorcycle into a lean position, we use the centrifugal force to our advantage in order to break the inertia pushing the motorcycle forward. To do this, we press the handlebar forward on its axis, the direction that we wish to turn. This creates a controlled fall to the side that we want to be going by pulling the front wheel out from underneath the bike and shifting the center of gravity to the left side. Finally, you adopt a natural turn by equalizing your speed and lean angle of the motorcycle. This action is called counter steering. Since we're pressing the handlebars counter to the wheel's direction, you only need to press briefly to break the inertia and get to the correct lean angle. Now that we know what counter steering is and why it works, let's take a look at some of the common myths you will read and see elsewhere. Myth 1. Counter steering is not required to ride a motorcycle. This is technically true. For example, you could weld a motorcycle steering column in such a way that turning the wheel would be impossible. However, what you'd have at that point would be a gimped and frustrating experience at best any time that turning was required. If you want to know what that looks like, check out the twist of the wrist video by Keith Code where you can see a rider try to do just that. It's pretty silly. Myth 2. Counter steering will cause you to low side your bike. At least some non-trivial percentage of people imagine something like this the first time that someone describes counter-steering to them. But this is actually drifting, not necessarily just counter-steering, although they are technically counter-steering as part of the drift. When counter-steering, you only briefly and gently press the handlebar forward, just enough to break that forward inertia in order to lean the bike. The actual amount of time and pressure it takes is minimal. Myth 3. You can initiate a turn on a motorcycle by pressing the handlebar down to the ground or lift the opposite handlebar up. If you're at a complete stop, if you have your feet down, this might work. Actually, you'd probably have to press out because you have the axis of the wheels that you're pivoting on, so you'd have to push left, right, out anyway. But if you're riding the bike, you don't actually have much leverage to create a significant lean on a motorcycle by simply pushing down or lifting up on one of your handlebars. Here, I tested it for you. Although this might feel like what's happening, if you're turning, you're definitely pressing forward. And there it is. Not so bad, right? I think it's really important for me to be transparent that I ate a lot of this information from primary sources that did a good job explaining one aspect of counter steering or another. If you're still confused after this video, I'd highly suggest you take a look at one of my primary sources. I'm sure one of them will fill in the gaps for you. If you're still confused after looking at all that stuff, leave a comment and I'll try to help clear it up for you. I'd also like to bring up that in this video I use the term centrifugal force, which is not technically what is actually happening. A Reddit user called me out on this in my previous video, which I appreciate. I'm gonna drop the conversation here because I think we had a good back and forth. And I just wanted to explain that that was a conscious decision that I made. 
If you're curious of the details between centrifugal and centripetal forces, I've included a link in the details to a video by the Science Asylum, which I think does a great job explaining this. That's it for counter steering. Hopefully I was able to achieve my goal of providing a clear and easy to understand explanation while bridging the gaps between several great primary reasons. Until next time, ride fast, take chances.